Hey, how's it going everyone? This is Brandon Byers from ggjacket.com here with a Photoshop beginner tutorial. Today we're going over a tutorial from a user named Super Mr. Metallica and he gave us a link to an image that he wanted to have us recreate and that image looks like this and it's kind of small but if you zoom in a little bit you can uh, still get a good idea of what it looks like. It's actually pretty sweet and uh, when Eli and I put our heads together to try and recreate it we actually made something that looked uh, very similar but all around way more awesome and what we came up with turned out like this and so as you can see we decided to call this an afterglow effect so anyway let's get right into this go ahead and start up your new document I'm gonna stick with the usual 1280 by 720 you can do whatever the heck you feel like doing and we'll hit OK I'm just going to go ahead and name this layer BG by double clicking on the name. And then with this layer selected, I'm going to hit Shift Backspace to bring up this fill dialog. And I'm just going to use black and then mode normal, 100% opacity. And I'm just going to hit OK. That'll fill up this layer with black right here. And then I'm just going to go grab my text tool off to the side here. And I'm going to use a font called Bleeding Cowboys. And the font Bleeding Cowboys can be found at 1001 Free Fonts. If you're looking for any kind of free font, I highly suggest going to that website because they have tons and tons of free fonts, and they're usually pretty awesome. So we're just going to click over here, and we're going to type in AFTERGLOW in all caps, pretty big in the color white. And I'm going to grab my Move tool and just kind of move it a little bit closer towards this center. And then if you go over to the afterglow layer, making sure it's selected, you can hit Control J on a PC or Command J on a Mac to duplicate it. And then we're just going to turn this off by clicking on the eye right there and go to the original afterglow. And then go back to your text tool by hitting the letter T. And then if you go up here to this box and give it a click, we'll just get this select text color pop-up menu. And we're just going to choose a yellow color. I'm going to change the red to 255, the green to 255, and the blue to 0, and that will give you a pure yellow right there. And we'll hit OK. And we're going to select these two layers by control clicking the BG, so that way we have two layers selected. And then we're going to merge them together by hitting control E or command E if you're on a Mac. So with these two layers merged together, we're just going to duplicate them with control J or command J. And then all we're going to do is make sure this is selected and go up to Filter, Stylize, Wind. And as soon as your window pops up, we're just going to make sure the method is set to Wind and the direction is from the right. And we're going to hit OK. And you can see that it made a little bit of that Wind effect. But I'm going to repeat that effect by hitting Control F or Command F. And I want these to be even longer, so I'll hit Control F again. And that's a pretty good uh, distance right there. So that was three wind filters applied to this. So we're just going to do the same thing going the opposite direction now. So we'll just go to Filter, Stylize, Wind. And then we're just going to change the direction to from the left. And we'll hit OK. And then we'll hit Control F. And then Control F again. And now we've got wind going to the left and right of our yellow afterglow layer. So we're just going to go ahead and turn this off and go to our original Afterglow. And then we're going to go to Image, Image Rotation, and 90 degrees clockwise. And that's just going to uh, turn the entire canvas 90 degrees clockwise. That way we can go back to our filter, Stylize Wind. And we'll just do it from the right to start off with. And now we can get the, the other directions going here for the Afterglow. So now we're going to go back to the wind and go to the other direction and then control F twice and we're looking pretty good. So we're just going to go ahead and turn this back around by going to image, image rotation, 90 degrees counterclockwise and now everything should be right side up. And if you go to your afterglow copy and turn it back on by clicking the eye right there, we're going to change the blend mode to screen. 
and that way all the blacks of this layer are going to show through and you'll be able to see everything that's below it. So we're actually going to merge these together like we did before with the text and the black layer by control clicking the this layer right here and then we're going to merge them together by hitting control E on a PC or command E on a Mac. And now we're going to go ahead and bring our afterglow text back by turning on this eye right here. And I want to go ahead and give it an inner shadow. So I'm just going to go down to this effects icon right here, give it a click and go to inner shadow. And all I'm going to do is change these settings right here. So I'm going to give it a 100% opacity, a uh, distance of one pixel, a choke of 10% and leave the size at five pixels. And that should give a pretty decent inner shadow. If you're working with a smaller size canvas, then you can go ahead and just do whatever looks right for your inner shadow. And we'll hit OK and close this back up over here. And I want to give a little bit of a yellow texture on top of the word afterglow. So I'm going to go over here to one of the textures that I've used in a previous tutorial. This is just something called a grunge texture. So you can probably just find one of these on Google or something like that. And I'm going to use my move tool and click and drag up to the tab until it swaps over. Then bring it back down and let go. And that way we've got our texture here. But I'm going to zoom out with my scroll wheel. That's an option in your preferences. And then I'm going to bring up the transform tool with control T on a PC or command C on a Mac. And then click and drag from outside one of these corners while holding shift. And that will lock it to certain degrees. And I'm just going to turn it so that it's uh, in a landscape more of a feel. And I'm going to drag it to the center and then drag the corner in while holding Alt and Shift till it pretty much fits our canvas right there. And then I'm going to hit Control Zero to zoom back in. And that looks fine to me, so we'll check mark it. And I want to give this texture a little bit of contrast. So I'm going to bring up the levels by hitting Control L on my PC or Command L on a Mac. And all we're going to do is keep an eye on the image while bringing in this black slider right here, which makes our darks darker. And then I'm going to bring in this white uh, slider right here, which makes our whites whiter. And that looks about right about there. So we'll go ahead and hit OK. And then over here next to the layers tab, we're going to swap over to our channels. And you see the thumbnail next to the letters RGB. If you hold control, you'll see a little box on your hand. And if you're on a Mac, go ahead and hold the open Apple key or the command key, you know, whichever it's called. And then just give that a click and you'll see lots of craziness going on over here in the image right here. And that's okay, that's what we want to happen. We'll just swap back over to our Layers tab, go ahead and delete the texture right there. And then down here in the bottom right hand corner, we're going to click this Create a New Layer icon. And I'll make a new layer. And I'm just gonna name this Texture real fast. Texture. And then I'm gonna bring up that Fill dialog again by hitting Shift Backspace. And we're gonna use White instead. Make sure it's Mode Normal Opacity 100%. And we'll just hit OK. And that will fill everything that you see moving with White. And then we're going to deselect by hitting Control D on a PC or Command D on a Mac. And now you can pretty much see we've got a bunch of white texture going on over here. But actually what we need to do to get that yellow coloring to it is go down to the effects icon and go to the color overlay. And we're just going to go ahead and click this red box right here and type in a number 255 because 255 red and 255 green with no blue is a pure yellow. And we'll hit OK and hit OK again and then close that up right there. And if you hold your mouse between the texture layer and the afterglow copy, and you hold the Alt key on your PC, or I believe it's Option on your Mac, you'll see this little icon up here. And if you give that a click, you'll see this little arrow next to the texture thumbnail. And then over here, you see it kind of masked itself to stay within the word afterglow. And that's all we really want to do. And the next thing we want to take care of is go ahead and add in the background. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this diamond plate JPEG right here. 
And to get this, all you have to do is go into Google, type in diamond plate, and voila, you got diamond plate textures. So I'm just going to click and drag this up to my tab, bring it back down. And I don't want it there. I want it in the bottom. So I'm just going to click and drag and name this diamond plate. And as you can see, we've kind of got the afterglows black kind of in the way. So we can't actually see the diamond plate. So we're actually going to go to this layer and set the blend mode to screen right there. And that will actually let all the blacks be kind of see through and all that good stuff. So we can actually see our lovely diamond plate texture. But this seems a little bit off center. So I'm going to go ahead and select the entire canvas by hitting Control A or Command A. And then if you have your move tool out, you can see that there's a bunch of icons up here. So we'll just click this icon right there and this icon right here. And that will align the diamond plate to vertically and horizontally center. And yeah, so that's just fancy talk to say that it centered the diamond plate texture perfectly. And we'll just hit Control D to deselect or Command D if you're on a Mac. And I kind of feel like putting on a vignette. So I'm going to go up to the texture right here and create a new layer above it. We're just going to call this, whoops. We're just going to rename this vin for vignette. And I'm going to go to my brush tool by hitting the letter B. And I feel like going to my vignettes down here. I know I promised that I would give you guys these vignettes, but I kind of forgot. I'll be sure to get these to you very shortly. So I'll give that a click. And there we go. That's all there is to it. So I hope you guys were able to follow along pretty well. I tried to explain everything step by step as clearly as I possibly could. And I want to give a thank you to everybody that sends in requests. You guys keep us going all the time, giving us new ideas. And they're really, really helpful. But I just want you guys to know that I am not exactly a master of Photoshop, so I can't do every single thing that you send me, but I will give it my best shot. So thanks again for sending in requests. Be sure to send us a message to send us even more, and we'll definitely do our best to make it into some kind of tutorial for you. So with all that said, we'll see you next time.